Mr. Math Blog here, and this lesson will help you get ready for your upcoming test on adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, don't forget all your lessons can be found at www.mrmathblog.com. And if you get a chance, uh, could you hit like or dislike or, or comment or something? Just let me know that you're uh, learning from these. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, a fraction that always has a numerator, we're supposed to choose the best term from this box over here. A fraction that always has a numerator of 1 is called a unit fraction, so it's going to be this guy right here. We'll talk about unit fractions uh, in this lesson again. So a number represented by a whole number and a fraction is called a, a whole number and a fraction would be called a mixed number right there, okay? All right, simplest form is just when you reduce a fraction down to simplest form, and we'll do some of that. I'll show you some of that in a little bit. Okay, so write the fraction as the sum of unit fractions. Okay, remember, unit fractions have numerators as 1, so the denominator tells you what size they are. So this says we're going to have 7 of 1 8 so we just add 7 or 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8 7 times, okay? And then 3 fifths, remember this is going to be the size of fifths, so a unit fraction would be 1 fifth, so we're going to have 3 of them. So it'll be 1 fifth plus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth, okay? Easy enough. Uh, write the mixed numbers as a fraction. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of ways, you guys. So, um, so the first way is this, you guys. Since we're talking on this one as sixth, you guys, these are in terms of one six. So if we did six one six, that would represent one. So here's here's six of them right here. Six one sixth of them. That's one. Here's another one right here. So there's that two right there for that right there. And then this three six is left over three six. So how many of them do we have? We have Whoops, we have 616 right there. Let me put that back right there. And we have 6 more is 12 plus uh, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 6 right there. Okay, on this one right here, I'm going to do a different method. We learned this towards the end of the chapter. What we did is we changed the numerator and we did uh, the, this number times this number is 15. And then we added the top number. So 5 times 3 is 15 plus 2 is 17. So it changes our our numerator to 17 fifths. Watch, we did that over here. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 plus uh, 3 is 15, so this is 15 6 right there. Okay, whatever way is best for you guys. Okay, write the fraction as, as uh, mixed numbers here, so we're going to change these back to mixed numbers. Okay, this is talking about thirds, so I have seven of them, so I'm going to show you seven one-thirds right here. Remember, three of them, you guys, three-thirds equals one. So here's another three more. So here's another three-thirds, which equals one. And this one more for the seven-thirds is going to be, so here's one plus one plus the one-third is going to be uh, two and one-third. Okay? And then on this one here, um, these are talking about fourths. So I'm going to add uh, nine-fourths as uh, four-fourths is one, you guys. So four-fourths plus four more fourths is eight-fourths plus this one gets us nine-fourths right there. So I'm going to replace this with one this with one, so one plus one is going to get us two, so two and one fourth, that left over one fourth, okay? All right, find the sum or difference. Okay, we've got a several of them right here. I'll do one of them at a time right here, so let's go ahead and do number uh, nine here. So four fifths minus one fifth. Remember, the, the denominator just tells us what's the size. So we're taking, so we have four of them here, we have one of them here, so we have three fifths left over. We just subtract the numerators, okay? So if we did this in a, in a bar graph right here, uh, bar model. So here's four of the five, and then we take off this one right here, and we're left over with this little span right here. So there's three of them, three fifths right there. And you can just subtract the numerators. Four minus one is three. Okay. Okay. So find the sum or difference on this one. Okay. So on this one, what I'm going to do is line them up uh, vertical right there, and then add the whole numbers, and then go ahead and add the numerators of the fractions. Four plus three is seven. 7, 6, and then we're going to change this 7, 6 to 6, 6 plus 1, 6. There's our 7, 6 right there, and 6, 6 is 1, so we're going to go ahead and add this 1 with this 3 and make it 4, so it's 4 and 1, 6 right there. Okay, now on this one here, this one's pretty easy because I can go ahead and subtract 7 tenths minus 5 tenths is 2 tenths, and then subtract 6 minus 3, so we're going to subtract the whole numbers and then subtract the fractions right there, so... So 6 minus 3 gets us this 3, and then I did these in red. 7 tenths minus 5 tenths gets us 2 tenths. And since 2 goes into those two guys evenly, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 10 five times, so 2 tenths is simplest form as 1 fifth right there. So either 3 and 2 tenths or 3 and 1 fifth on that one, okay? 
All right, okay, on this one here, we're going to have to do some borrowing here. So I cannot do uh, 1 8 minus 3 8. So I'm going to change this 5 to 4 plus 1. But the 1 is going to then be changed to 8 8, since we're talking about 8s right here. Okay, so then we can go ahead and add 8 8 plus 1 8 gets us 9 8. So then we're going to uh, replace, now we can subtract, we can replace this 5 and 1 8 with 4 and 9 8. So that's what this says here. Then uh, subtract the mixed numbers by replacing those two. So now we can go ahead and subtract 9 8 minus 3 8 gets us 6 8. And we're going to do 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. And then again, in simplest form, 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 8 4 times. So either 1 and 6 8 or in simplest form, 1 and 3 fourths right there. Okay, use the properties in mental math to find the sums. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to move some numbers around right here and some parentheses also. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch these two numbers around right here. So inside the parentheses, uh, we'll do them one at a time. So I'll just switch those two numbers around, okay? So can you see that that is commutative property of addition when they, they just commuted around the addition sign right there, okay? So I just switch these around. And so like when I drive to work, I, I commute to work. So these guys are commuting around the addition sign, okay? And then now what we're going to do is we're going to move the parentheses over to these two guys over here. And the reason why we did that, that's called the associative property. So I, I tell my students this. Instead of associating these two numbers first, we're going to go ahead and associate these two numbers first. And what's nice about these is this has one-third plus two-thirds. One third plus two thirds is three thirds, which is one. So we can go ahead and add the four plus two, which is six, and then and then uh, the one third plus two thirds gets us this extra one right here, or three thirds. Okay, six plus one is seven, so seven plus three is ten. Okay, so let's try that again with this one here. Okay, so uh, three and and four tenths plus five and two six plus uh, six tenths. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, uh, look at this 4 tenths and 6 tenths. 4 tenths plus 6 tenths is 10 tenths. So here's the first thing we're going to do is move these two guys around right here. What property is that, you guys? Do you remember what property is that? Remember what I do when I drive to work and these guys are driving around that addition sign? Okay, that's called the commutative property of addition right there. Okay, they commuted around the addition sign. Okay, now we're going to, uh, instead of associating these two guys right here, whoops, I just gave up the punch right here. So we're going to put these two guys in parentheses right there, and that's called the associative property of addition right there. Okay, and then because these uh, fit nicely, 4 tenths plus 6 tenths is, uh, is uh, 1 tenth, or 10 tenths, sorry, which is 1. Okay, these two guys give us 10 tenths, which is that 1 right there, and then uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. And then now we can go ahead and add this 4 with this 5 right here. 4 plus 5 is 9. And then it has this leftover 2 tenths right here. Okay, 2 goes into 2 once into 10 5 times. So if you want to write it in simplest form, it's 9 and 1 fifth. So 9 and 2 tenths or 9 and 1 fifth in simplest form. All right, let's try some a couple of multiple choice. Danica can jump 2 and 2 fourths feet in the air. Her younger sister can only jump 3 fourths feet in the air. How much higher can Danica jump than her sister? Okay, this is a subtraction problem, so we're going to go ahead and subtract. Okay, 2 fourths minus 3 fourths. What we need to do is borrow from this 2. So this 2 is going to become 1 plus 1. But the other one is going to be changed to 4 fourths right there. Okay, so here's 2. It's this 1 plus 1, but that other one is changed to 4 fourths. So now we can add 4 fourths plus 2 fourths is 6 fourths right there. So we're going to replace this one or two and two fourths with one and six fourths right there. Okay, and then now we can go ahead and subtract um, uh, six fourths minus three fourths is three fourths. So it looks like it's going to be choice B right here. And then one minus this doesn't have anything, so one minus zero basically is one and three fourths. Okay, all right. Okay, Lauren mixes four and four six cups of carrot juice with three and one six cup of apple juice for her smoothie. She then drank three and three six cups of her smoothie. So how much is her smoothie left? Well, first of all, we got to find out how much did she make all together. So we're going to add these two numbers together: four and four six plus three and one six. So four plus one is five. So five six, and then four plus three is seven. Seven and five six. Now she drinks this amount, so we're going to subtract that from that. So after drinking three and three six cups, 
See, then uh, we subtract those two numbers. So now we can go ahead and do 7 minus 5 is, uh, or 7 minus 3 is 4. So it looks like it's going to be choice B right here because that's the only one with 4 right there. And then 5 minus 3 is, uh, is 2. So 4 and 2 6 cups are left over inside her smoothie. All right, last problem. Miguel has lots of homework to do. He decides that 6 tenths of his homework is for math. Science is 2 tenths for his homework. And spelling counts for 1 tenth of his homework. And the rest of the time he'll spend on history. So how much greater is his time on math and spelling? Okay, here's math right here, and then spelling is right here. And then what fraction, and it says draw a model, so we'll draw a model to prove that. What fraction of his homework is for science and spelling? So we're going to add these two guys right here. And then how much of his homework is, left, is spent on history? So that's the rest of this, you guys. Well, remember, 10 tenths, since these are all in tenths, 10 tenths is, is, is 1. So let's do one at a time. So how much greater is this time spent on math than on spelling? Okay, and it says draw a bar model. So since these are in tenths, then uh, what I did, uh, this is just one example of a bar model. We're going to go ahead and do uh, 10 of them, you guys. There's 10 one-tenths right here. And then here's Miguel's spent time on math, which is six of these guys right here. And then spelling is this one, one-tenth right here. So when we subtract, we have this little piece left over, and there's five of them left over, five-tenths, or one-half in simplest form right there. So there's that one right there. And there's our model to prove the answer, I guess, right there. Okay. So what fraction of his homework is for science and spelling? Okay, that means we're just going to go ahead and add these two guys. So two-tenths plus one-tenth is three-tenths right there. How much of his homework is spent on history right there? Okay, so we need to figure out, okay, um, uh, his total time is uh, on the other three subjects is uh, the six tenths plus two tenths plus one tenth, which is nine tenths right there. Okay, so that means um, uh, the rest of it's going to be coming from ten tenths. So his total time on homework would be um, uh, ten tenths. So since they're all in tenths right there, so we do ten tenths minus nine tenths, which is one tenth right there. All right, good luck on your test, you guys. Let me know how you did if this uh, video helped, and take care.